He's not overrated. He's not the problem. Dan is way off kilter. He's only doing it because he, he knows he can, because he's not going to get a rebuttal. But that's not true. Let me tell you, I, I've been around uh, Chris Paul just being an ACC guy when I first saw him. I, I loved his game. And, and playing with Isaiah Thomas, I saw so much of, of what he does. And I see, because I'm in Los Angeles, I see when he puts his heart into it. I see he's all about literally his teammates and how he tries to get them together. You have to understand, you have 12 small companies trying to work together. And he's on the court trying to put it in order. He is, if he was such a bad guy, and we started talking about Houston yesterday. I don't mean to bring back up uh, yesterday. But we were talking about Houston wanting to get him. Now, if, if Coach, who is about running gun, feels that CP3 should be on Houston, that should tell you. A guy who only wants to run and gun, they understand what he can do and how. He can, he's literally the one you want flying. He may, not be, uh, he may not be top gun and going off, but he's definitely constant. And he's the guy who can translate from the coach to the players. I think he was wrong. I really do. I was on air with Dan. Um, I was there for that conversation. I know why Dan is saying what he's saying. I know what he's talking about here. Mm -hmm. And this is what he's talking about, John. He's talking about specifically leadership. He's not talking about shot making and he's not talking about stats. Dan knows very well that Chris has averaged 21 points and nine assists in the playoffs, mm -hmm. that he can play. But what Dan is pointing to specifically, and he's suggesting there are NBA people that agree with him, is that Chris's leadership is severely lacking. Now, what's interesting to me is, the name that Dan invokes is the same name that you invoke. And you, of all, everybody we could ask to sit at this table today, would have the most unique, available insight to add to this. You're right. And what is that name? Isaiah Thomas. It is Isaiah Thomas. Right. And Dan Dockett says specifically, Isaiah Thomas exemplified what it was to be a leader, to inspire your team not just to achieve but to overachieve. And he is saying, Perhaps, and I would say this to Dan, a little over his skis on using words like fraud. Yeah. But he is saying Chris lacks those leadership skills, and I will tell you, Dan has a point. No, I don't no. think Chris is a fraud, but he's got a point. No, do, do, let me just say this. Isaiah come a different cloth. They may be from the same factory, but they're a different cloth. Isaiah grew up in the west side of Chicago. That, that's entirely a different place than growing up in Charlotte, North Carolina. His, the, when we grew up in the 70s and 80s is entirely different than being in 2017. Him not being as vocal on court or coming out in the paper and calling out, like a lot of times when I watch these shows or, talk, or read these people or hear them on the radio, they talk about guys calling out somebody else. They consider that to be leadership. I don't. I consider the way you handle yourself to be leadership. I consider how when something comes around, when everybody is down, you're the one picking up your teammate. When there's all the arrows, you're the one standing in front taking them. Now, he does that. That's a leader to me. Okay, this is the argument. This is why Dan has a point, okay? It's a combination of what the Clippers have been, been able to achieve with Chris as their leader mm -hmm. and a reflection of who the Clippers are. Listen, me, hear me out. Number one, I believe Chris Paul has the record for most playoff uh, appearances to have never reached a conference final. Never, never, never reached a conference final, but been in the playoffs and played more games in the playoffs than anyone else who could say that about themselves. So they have not overachieved. And let's not pretend like Chris Paul's playing on a team like Russell Westbrook, like you just talked about a minute ago. What? He's had Blake Griffin, DeAndre, uh, DeAndre Jordan. He's had players along with him. So, so the Clippers have not, at the very least, overachieved. And many would say they have underachieved. That's point number one. Number two, and this is the more direct point to Dan's argument, it's the dysfunction of the Clippers. That if you look at that team, their body language, Chris Paul's body language, the way they complain, Blake, Jordan, Doc, that they bellyache, they moan, they have bad body languages, they don't get along, that something's not working with the Clippers. So I'll just ask you this. If Chris Paul's the leader, that only gives us one of three options. One, he's a bad leader and he's causing some of that dysfunction as Dan points out. I can't buy into that because I don't have enough evidence. But number two, if he is such a great leader, why can't he correct that? That's what leadership is. Leadership is stepping into a bad situation and turning around the boat. Leadership's not easy. Leadership is hard. So at the very least there, Chris isn't turning around that dysfunction. 
or third option, and this one's is equally hard to buy as it's Chris's fault, is it's completely and utterly unleadable. That mm. the Clippers are beyond help, and Chris could do nothing to help it. I'm going to go with that one. Because Ooh, that's an truth, indictment of everybody. Because then. the truth, uh, Pierce retired. Now, if I, would, if, if I had his number and could have woke and awakened him at 3 o'clock in the morning, I would have called him and asked him a question directly because they try to bring in a champion mentality. So I think that's what it is. It's the same thing I was talking about Westbrook. When you bring in a mentality, the team takes on that mentality. I think they forced Chris on that squad. We all know when it was the Laker, then thrown back and then put on the Clippers. I think Blake being hurt. Um, I think all of those things tie into it. I just think sometimes the leaders, you can't make chemistry work all the time. And also just want to throw this fact out there that, that Chris Paul was reelected as the president of the Players Association. So he is a leader outside of that court. But look, that team, that team is not being led. You can ask why. And at some point, you look at the guys who are the leaders and go, hmm, why? 